is that orthopedic surgeon should think about. Joint aspiration. Does the patient have infection in the joint? Should I aspirate the joint to check for infection? When you inject steroids in a joint, it is better to aspirate first and see the color of the fluid. You don't only inject steroids when the patient has infection. Aspiration and analysis of joint fluid is the best method for diagnosis of possible infection. You can aspirate the joint for cell count with differential, for glucose level, for gram stain, for crystals, and for culture and sensitivity. Synovial cell count greater than 50,000 usually points to infection. Lower count may be present in infected cases. If you have more than 100,000 cells, the joint is infected, the joint is septic. In infection, synovial fluid leukocytic count is rarely below 20,000 cells. In 50% of patients with septic arthritis, the WBC count is greater than 50,000. The normal synovial fluid is only 2 ml and it has less than 200 leukocytes. With degenerative arthritis, the fluid is considered non-inflammatory and the cells are less than 2,000. With inflammatory synovitis or inflammatory arthritis, such as rheumatoid arthritis, gout, pseudogout, or writer's syndrome, the cells will be greater than 2,000 leukocytes. Suspect infection if the leukocytes number increases. Trauma, less than 5,000 cells. Usually the patient have large hematoma and swelling of the knee after trauma. They aspirate the knee and you find blood the chance of ACL tear is about 70%. If it is non-traumatic recurrent hemorrhagic effusion, then suspect pigmented villonodular synovitis. The differential is 90% PMN that can indicate infection or crystal-induced synovitis, even if the leukocytic count is low. In general, the differential, if it is more than 50% PMN cells, that occurs usually in inflammatory, and greater than 90% occurs usually in infection. Bacteria loves sugar. In infection, the synovial glucose level is less than half of the serum. The bacteria consumed it. Gram stain identifies the infecting organism in about one third of the times, so it really gives a low yield. Gram stain is not a very good test. Negative gram stain does not mean there is no infection. When you aspirate the fluid, look for crystals. You need to analyze the synovial fluid for crystals. The presence of crystals does not rule out infection. Infection can occur in the presence of gout and pseudogout in about 5% of the cases. Clinically, it is difficult to differentiate infection from crystal-induced synovitis. The clinical presentation is almost similar. Sometimes the color of the aspirated fluid is similar. Sometimes you can't tell is it a gout or infection. The fluid in gout can be cloudy. So examine the fluid for crystals. Gout, they will give you needles and it is negative bifringent crystals. It is urate crystals. In pseudogout, it is calcium pyrophosphate crystals. 
Pseudogout is rhomboid and positive, bifringent. Cultures should be performed, especially if there is a concern about infection, despite the presence of crystals. The color of fluid may help. Light straw color, usually non-inflammatory. If it is yellowish or greenish, it is inflammatory. If it is creamy, yellow, opaque, usually it's infection. When you do a culture, do it for a rope and any rope, and consider slower growing organisms like P. acne that may take few weeks to grow up on a culture. And with these septic joints, make sure in an old patient, you may want to do cardiac echo for endocarditis. You may want to do some labs for immunosuppressive patients for HIV or hepatitis B. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.